today we're going to be stitching the dog bone shaped uh, doggy poop bag holder. This design actually stitches out exactly like a hand sanitizer key fob. So if you've ever made one of those, this is the exact same concept. It's just shaped a little differently. So the materials that I'm going to use are a piece of vinyl for the front, a piece of vinyl for the back, and a piece of dog bone print fabric for the applique on the front. That is, of course, optional. The measurements for these pieces of fabric are, of course, in your PDF. The first step is to hoop some stabilizer. In my opinion, tearaway or cutaway doesn't matter. I like to use my trusty cutaway black stabilizer. I just feel like it looks better sandwiched in between these key fobs. I am stitching the eyelet version of this fob. It comes with an eyelet and a snap tab. For this kind of fob, for whatever reason, I just prefer the eyelets. That's just a personal preference. So I stitched aqua on black simply so you could see the step better. You're gonna take your front piece of vinyl and you're gonna cover that placement, very easy. And then I like to pin at all four corners just to ensure that it stays nice and still while you're embroidering on the front of your fob. The next few steps are actually optional. There is an applique design on the front of the key fob. If you want to use that, you stitch the placement for your fabric and then place your fabric to cover that and then you run the tack down for the fabric and trim around it. It's just like any other applique. Here you can see I've trimmed around my applique fabric and now I'm going to run the satin stitch around the edge. Now you can see that my satin stitch is done on my applique fabric and I added a name to this key fob. I added the name Fluffy. That was the name of my childhood poodle. I used Embrilliance Essentials to merge the name onto my key fob. So I'm going to go to that step and I actually need to change the thread so I can't feel myself pushing the buttons, but I'm going to stitch the name Fluffy onto my key fob and then I'll come right back. Oh, and obviously adding a name or an initial or anything like that is an optional step. The font I'm using is called Jelly Bean and it is available at designsbylittlebee.com. Now with the eyelet fob, here's where you actually start to have some choices. Right now, before you do the first outline around your fob, okay, that's upside down. <laughs> before you do the outline around your fob, the first one, you can put a piece of very thin, like maybe cork or blackboard fabric or even another piece of black stabilizer behind that front, behind your fob as it is right now. And that will cover up those back stitches inside your fob. Now, the way I do mine with two layers of vinyl, nobody's ever going to see the inside of my fob where my doggy poop bags go. So I don't do, I usually don't do that when I make the eyelet version. When I make the snap tab version, yes, I do put a backing on it. But when I make the eyelet version, I don't. Just because I'm never going to be pulling the bag out and showing, or pulling the roll of bags out and showing people the inside of my fob. So I don't care what it looks like. So I'm just going to put this back on and I'm going to run one of the final outlines. If you did not add a piece of stabilizer or cork or something like that, then you can just run this step as is. And then we'll move along to how to put on the pocket. Okay, now we've got our first outline around the edge of our fob. And I went ahead and I stitched these two pocket placement lines. And here's the second choice that you have when you make an eyelet key fob like this that's going to hold a sanitizer or a roll of bags or something like that. You flip it over and you can see where those pocket lines go up to. Now I've got my other piece of vinyl. I could, number one, line this piece of vinyl up with that pocket. And then I would have the bags sticking inside that pocket. Or I could cover the entire thing and then I will install eyelets through both of these layers and I'll have like a fully enclosed fob. So you can either line an edge up with these pocket placement lines, or you can cover the whole thing. If you've watched any of my tutorials on hand sanitizer cases before, you know that I like to cover the whole project. I just like it that way. It gives it some stability and sturdiness, and that's the way I prefer to do it. So whichever one you decide, you need to pin this down wrong side against your stabilizer, 
And I highly suggest pinning from the front so that you don't have sharp pokies on the pins next to your machine bed. Now your key fob is complete, so you need to trim around it. From the front, it looks like this. From the back, it looks like that. You can see it's got the opening at the top for your puppy bags and the hole at the side for pushing one bag through. So I recommend trimming from the front so that you can see the full outline of what you're cutting. Here is my finished key fob. What you're gonna do is take your bag, I mean your roll of bags, pull one off, and I like to put it around my finger kind of like this. You're gonna put the roll in, and at the same time, push that one bag I don't have a dog, so I never do this, so like I might be kind of clumsy looking. Push your roll down at the same time that you pull that one bag out. You need to install your eyelet at the top, and that's it. Oh, and also, yes, it does snap closed with one roll of dog bags from the dollar store and a one ounce sanitizer from Bath & Body Works. I hope this video helped you stitch one of these bags and kind of demystified the process of it. They're super easy, very practical, and fun to make for yourself or others. I will see you in the next video, and I'll chat with you in the group. Bye!